Today, I'm going to do a hardware review and a teardown of the Dell G7. Let's get started. The Dell G7 is intended as a gaming laptop and has lots of ports. This side has the Thunderbolt, USB 3, and headphone jack. Turning it to the back, we'll find a lock, the power port, HDMI 2.0, USB 3.0, mini display port, and ethernet. On the right side, you'll find a standard SD reader and another USB 3.0. All these different port options are a great strength of the G7. In fact, one of my favorite things about this laptop are the many ports available on the back. It made the desk area very clean as all the cables went to the wall behind the computer. If I needed to plug in something real quick, I could still use the many side options that were available. Flipping it over, we see that the back is simple with two large vents. The sound from speakers come out the front around the edge. Tearing it open, I'm going to use this bona fide hardware kit. It's my favorite kit and I've used it in nearly all of my videos. To take the back off, we're going to start by removing these screws. They're very small, so be careful not to lose them. Like most laptops, the screws are found around the outside edge. On the G7, there was none under the stickers, so I simply removed those outside ones and it came right off. To me, the first thing that stood out were these massive blue heat sink vents and these large fans that circulate air. Looking at the rest of the laptop, we have the Wi-Fi card. This ribbon cable connects to the keyboard. This connects to the battery, which is only 60 watts. Underneath these anti-static guards are the two RAM slots. This has a max capacity of 64 gigs of RAM. This section here is for the hard disk drive. This is the SD card and USB port. Underneath this metal cover is the M.2 storage drive. To upgrade your storage, you'll need to remove this plate by taking out these two screws. Lifting off the plate, you'll find underneath some heatsink material. This M.2 drive is actually physically very small, so we'll need to remove this adapter so it'll fit the M.2 2280 size. To remove an M.2 drive, undo this one screw in the back, and you'll see that the M.2 drive has now sprung up and you'll need to slide it out. This is an NVMe drive, and the two notches on the right tell me it's a BNM key. Even though it's physically smaller, it still has a 256 gig capacity. With the old drive gone, I push down on this adapter and it slides right out. Looking at it closer, you'll see that there is an adaptive screw that slides into it where the M.2 drive will go. So that it will fit a 2280 drive, I flip it over and slide it in the opposite direction. Inside of this external enclosure, I have another M.2 drive that I'm going to use as a primary source of storage and to load programs from. This is a fantastic external enclosure, so if you're planning on replacing an M.2 drive, I recommend picking one of these up as it will allow you to use the old drive that you just replaced. Now the reason why I'm replacing my old one with this XPG M.2 drive is that it's much more reliable and faster. As I just mentioned, this is an M.2 2280. The 2280 number indicates the physical size of the hard drive, not the storage capacity. That's why we had to flip that little adapter around so it would physically fit the 2280 size. Just like that, it fits perfectly. So we screw it down and we're done upgrading the storage. Now that we're done reviewing the internals, let's put the back plate on, screw it down, flip it over and turn it on. Now this is the plug that came with the computer. The plug shape is fairly standard for Dell computers, but the brick itself was very heavy and would be very hard to carry around. Now let's open it up and take a look at the screen and keyboard. The version I'm reviewing is the Dell G7 790 and has a RTX 2060 inside. With that graphics card and thermals, it's very thick and also quite heavy. The trackpad worked fine, but had some problems with multi-touch. The keys are RGB backlit and worked great. Through the preloaded software, you can set custom color schemes on the keys. Turning it on, we see it's a 144Hz 1080 screen. If you're going to game, never get anything less than 144Hz on a laptop. This is an IPS panel with decent viewing angles. The color resolution was just fine. It's a decent screen, but not as good as other laptops. All right, we're done with the G7 hardware review. Overall, it's a decent gaming laptop, I forgot to mention that it's nearly all plastic and is a bit too heavy for my taste. However, having the many ports is nice and it's also very easy to upgrade. All right, we're done. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day.